Welcome back everybody. This is Mandy and this is going to be a resin project. This is the second time I've done this voiceover and I somehow deleted it. So sorry about the wacky view and wacky lighting. Um, this is a, I forgot, I think it's 20 by 48 inch piece of glass. And I have, um, this took me like three days. So I have like warp speed sped up this video so this first layer um, I use some resin tints like base tints um, in black and white and they're very opaque and they didn't really move like I wanted them to so you saw the black go down first uh, I have a clear layer of epoxy under all of this and I've got my high class K cups propping up the glass and now um, that dark tealish color is called blue my mind from Woody's goodies and I am mixing up various colors this is for a friend of ours whose colors are um, gray and teal and lime green so we already made her some coasters that were primarily lime green with some teal so this is going to be the coffee table so this will be primarily teal um, one of my greatest mistakes in this pour was putting that white down. It made the piece so busy, but in my mind, I was going to blow it around almost like you would a Dutch pour and a resin pour. Um, but it, it was, it just cured too fast and it didn't work. So I just laid down, um, some pearl from Woody's goodies or frosty pearl and some Milky Way from color art. Milky Way is gorgeous. And um, see this attachment I'm using on my heat gun, I've used it on resin Dutch pours before, and it usually does a great job at creating beautiful like lacing and, um, but the, the resin tint just really worked against me. I used some interference blue and green from Color Art, um, and I've also laid down some mermaid and some Celestial Sky from Color Art. Surf's Up is that lighter teal color from Color Art. And so now what I'm trying to do is blend it. So I'm moving things around with the heat gun. Um, obviously, this is taking way longer than it looks like. And I'm at this point realizing I should have not used this white at all. So the reason I have hyperlapsed this like beyond um, what is normal is because this video would be like forever long if I didn't so I essentially continue to move this around using the heat gun trying to blend it and then I realize it is so incredibly busy and there we're gonna have to have another layer so at this point I'm just trying to spread it around as much as I can blend it as much as I can and um, knowing that we're gonna have to let it dry we're gonna have to do another layer which is fine. That's what's great about resin is you can't really mess it up too bad where you can't fix it with another layer. So that's kind of what we're working on. So this little first section of the video, I have probably taken an hour's worth of video and chunked it down to five minutes. So because it's only so entertaining for you to watch me hit it with a heat gun for so long. Now what you see here is I'm torching um, to make sure the epoxy is loose enough. And I had this brilliant idea to add some black aluminite dye to my leftover epoxy and move it around with the heat gun, thinking it would um, mute the brightness of the white. Which, And I also added some more of that blue my mind color because it's a dark color. And I thought, this will probably help which was a great idea until I tripped the circuit breaker with my heat gun. My husband was doing homework. And so I tripped the breaker. And after I reset the breaker, I was afraid to trip it again. So I didn't use the heat gun. I just literally torched that. And then I shifted it by picking it up and tilting it to try to blend it because those lines from the, the dye were so harsh because I didn't really get to blend them the right way. 
So, yeah. So this became kind of crazy. In a minute, I'm going to give you a close-up of the first phase. Then we're going to let this dry and come back and do part two. In part two, I obviously am not going to use any white. Um, and we are going to fix it. So, you know, don't give up on me yet. Before I forget, a lot of what we're using today is from Resin Art, and there is a 20% off promo code in the description box below for anything on the Color Art website. Um, please don't mistake the beauty of the products for the way I have laid them down. They're absolutely gorgeous, and you'll see up close how versatile they are because we use them to fix it. Okay. Um, it looks super busy, obviously, but there is some really cool detail if again if this was like a painting and it wasn't supposed to be a table <laughs> it would be pretty cool so there's some places where there's obviously a little bit of lacing in here these harsh thin lines are kind of what I was trying to hit up with the heat gun and I really couldn't however I think they kind of add a little bit of something now you can see a little bit of lacing right there from when we tilted it. It's very sparkly. Obviously it wouldn't look that sparkly 100% of the time. This is under a flash, so I don't think it would look like, you know, glitter threw up on the table, but my plan is that when we come in and do a flood coat, we will emphasize a little bit of black, not a ton and that dark color to balance things out and I might add a little bit of Milky Way I don't know though we'll see it'll soften it a little bit um, but yeah there's some really beautiful parts that see that color right there that dark green blue color blue jeans I think is what it was called adds a lot of balance without it all being black and that was what I had in my mind and the interference green kind of brings a little pop of green without adding lime green. It sort of subtly brings it in. This part is kind of cool. There's some cells in the black where it overlaps some other colors. I like this wispy black and white. That's what I was going for. Obviously I added too much white. Note to self, stick with the dye when you're going for wispy. So, but you know, sometimes when you do things for friends, you get to experiment. Look at those crazy cells. Those are crazy, right? That looks pretty crazy right there. I like that. That might continue to develop. Um, don't love that cell. It looks kind of like a spine, but again, we're going to bring some color back on the top, so that's not a big deal. But this sparkle that you're seeing right here is Milky Way. It's like magnificent. And you can use Milky Way in resin or in acrylic. So yeah, thanks for going on the journey. Obviously I hope that I edit out a lot of the hullabaloo, but we'll see how we fix it. Okay, so this is super sped up, but this is day two. So the chaotic layer from day one is already dry and we're adding a clear coat of epoxy. We're not going to use any white this time for obvious reasons. Um, we're also not going to use any like black base tint or dye because of the opacity. So I mixed up some black um, alcohol ink into the epoxy for a little bit more transparency to help it blend. We'll mix more of the Blue My Mind color, uh, which is that dark greenish teal. I mixed up some more gray. I also I mixed up a color called Prince Charming from Woody's Goodies, which is sort of like a slate blue gray with a teal undertone. My hope was that it would sort of blend some of these um, colors where there's a lot of white. I didn't really end up liking the result that much. So later on, when I need epoxy, I end up mixing it into the gray and the black. Um, but that's what I did. And then I mixed up some more of the 
Um, ooh, I'm having a brain fart. It's too early in the day. I uh, mixed up some more of the Milky Way. There it is from Color Art, which is uh, my thought was that it would look kind of like a pearly color, but not add really a white effect because it's mostly translucent. And so even though it'll soften um, like a pearl would, it's not going to have any significant like white opacity. So it should refract the color around it and be beneath it. So that was why I wanted to keep adding it in there. Um, so all I'm doing now is just kind of spreading those colors out and then I'm going to move it around with the heat gun again. Um, I end up coming up a little bit short on the epoxy and I don't have a lot of clear left. So what I do toward the end is I combine the, the gray color with that slate blue color and the black alcohol ink and I make kind of a like a blue gray. And um, had I really thought this through, I, w I could have made some Payne's gray. Um, but anyway, um, so that's what I'm doing here is I'm moving it all around. I This is probably an hour's worth of messing around. And I sped it up super fast because essentially all I'm doing is laying down color and moving it around with the heat gun. And... Um, creating a second layer. Um, toward the end of this, I start to notice that even this is not quite getting me the effect that I want. Um, and so then you'll notice that I significantly darken up what we're doing. Um, but here, I just have the attachment on the heat gun, and I'm moving the color around to blend it a little bit. Um, in my original video before I cut the 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 walk through and I did a voiceover I tell you that I accidentally epoxied that uh, heat gun extension or nozzle or whatever that's called on to the heat gun so I had wanted to use the more flat extension that I use in like resin dutch pours to blend the color so I could kind of blend it over the other color and create some wispy cool effects <laughs> but I couldn't so I had to kind of stick with what we had because it was stuck on there until my husband helped me get it off which was at, way after this project so um, this may have moved a little a little bit faster for me if I had been able to use the the part that I wanted so again, sorry about the angle. There was just literally no way to capture this um, with good lighting and a good angle because of where the glass was and I couldn't move it. And um, so anyway, the fact that in the first phase of this that I could not use the heat gun to move things around really um, created some challenges. But um, at this point, we're just moving the heat gun around. We're blending the colors that we've put down and I'm about to come to the realization that we need more epoxy and this is not working as well as I had hoped. So hang in there for me for the other section of this. Like I said, I have substantially sped probably four or five hours worth of work up so that you don't get thoroughly bored, but hang in with me because I do find a way to save this. All right, so at this point is where I mixed basically all my um, gray, the Prince Charming kind of blue-gray color, the leftover epoxy, which wasn't very much, and the black alcohol ink tinted epoxy. And I'm spreading it around um, and just moving it around with the heat gun. Again, this is another like 30 minutes that I really, really sped up. So you can see I'm just trying to blend it over those places where there's so much like loud color and trying to kind of clean up the edges a little bit. Um, again, if I didn't if I didn't speed this up, you would just die of boredom. So I'm just moving it around. Um, I will say just from a safety perspective, um, 
I did this in a in like one of our bedrooms and we, I never expected that it would take that long to move things around and so um, I have a little bit of an epoxy allergy so while I was you know wearing a respirator and all that my skin had a reaction to just the hyper exposure to the heat and all of that so if you find yourself in a situation where your plan is not working very well just be conscientious of um, overworking your epoxy with heat because as you're heating it up, you're going to have, if you have a reaction to epoxy, which I do have a reaction to some epoxy, um, you're going to be more likely to respond to it with the heat. So I had to kind of take a break for a couple days um, after this to allow my, my skin to do better I, I used it used to be so bad that I would like wear a Tyvek suit wear a respirator with a face shield that's how sensitive my skin was to it um one one of the reasons when people ask me like what brand of epoxy do you use and all that so I love the stone coat which is what I'm using here but I do have a little bit of a reaction to stone coat even though like there's no VOCs and all that sometimes it's just an allergy reaction I like KS resin um, other than the bubbles, which I think is just a learning curve. Um, but most of the time when I do tumblers and I coat paintings and I coat coasters and things that I do on the regular, I use faux rizzle art resin because I have the least reaction to faux rizzle. So if, if I'm going to hyper expose myself to something, I should obviously err on the side of the one that doesn't irritate my skin as much. So um, that's kind of why I do that. So at this point, I'm just taking a step back to see how the damage control is going. So I have a little bit of Milky Way left over, and I'm basically adding it in some places that are still really busy since it's somewhat translucent, and moving it around in hopes that it will start to blend those areas a little bit better. I'm, again, super sped up. I'm also running a popsicle stick through some of the lines to spread it out a little bit. Um, because I don't have a ton left, so that's why you see some of those have lines in them. Um, so now I'm just moving it around. And trying to blend it. It does help a lot. In the Milky Way, in the finished product, I hope I can get a good glimpse for you it's so pretty it's so it's so sparkly and so beautiful and adds so much depth the lighting in this video is really terrible for you to see the detail and also by now i have been working on this epoxy for like 30 or 40 minutes so it's it's heated up a lot which also causes it to cure faster so at this point, I'm assessing again, and I decide I'm going to try to break it up with popsicle sticks kind of all over the place and heat it up again. See if I can't move some of that color around, blend it a little bit better. And if this doesn't work, because I really don't want to hit it with another layer of epoxy and then a flood coat, because that's just so much epoxy at that point. I decide I'm going to give alcohol ink sprays a try, even though I think at this point it's too set for them to work. So again, I sped this up big time. So I'm just popping the bubbles, blending it around a little bit, and then, would you believe it, I trip the breaker again. You see? I can't make this stuff up. So then alcohol inks it is coming up this is like the longest damage control ever so those two bottles are two inks that i made from two different resin art colors one was surfs up and one was mermaid um you can make alcohol inks with resin art you can make them with you know your typical 
good quality mica pigments. You can't make them from primary elements, they're different. Um, but because alcohol products are, I'm sorry, because uh, micas are solvent based and they mix into epoxy, they will mix into alcohol. So all I did was I put a little bit of 91% isopropyl alcohol into some spray bottles and I shook them up. I will say I don't like those spray bottles. So after this project, I ordered some small one ounce spray bottles that spray more evenly. Um, I find with those bigger ones, when they start to run out, you have a heck of a time getting to what's left of um, what's in the bottle. So, but that's what I had around, so I mixed it up. And at this point, the reason why I heated up the epoxy is because it's really past the point of being able to do this. So I wanted to make sure it would react. So I'm just spraying in a couple places where it's super busy and I'm kind of watching to see how it does. Now with this terrible lighting and angle, it might be difficult for you to see it. Um, but this is where doing things like the tabletop, this is where I really like to use stone coat. Because with stone coat, even after I show you guys the, the final look, it continued to move overnight. And where we sprayed the alcohol, it caused some blending of the colors that we weren't going to get without a lot more work. And so, thankfully, one good thing is the epoxy was so set by now that um, the typical, like, cell reaction of the alcohol, where it sometimes causes, like, a crater or a pit in the epoxy, didn't really happen a lot because... The epoxy was already very thick and it was hardening. So I'm over here struggling with this stupid bottle, but I basically just kind of sprayed and focused most of the spray in the places that was, you know, very busy. And the weird looking lines that I did to spread out the epoxy actually kind of looked pretty cool if that was the intent, which it wasn't, but um, this ends up being a really good fix for this. Um, and I was super happy. I ended up, of course, doing some flood coats and stuff after this. Um, but I'm happy to say that the table turned out really, really beautiful. Um, considering what an epic disaster it was after the first day, it really turned out beautiful. You can start to see at this angle where it's starting to become less busy. You can start to see it. It's hard to see entirely because um, the lighting's kind of bad, but you can see where all those places that were super loud are starting to blend. So yay. Um, I was trying to be very careful because I'm in <laughs> I'm in my stepdaughter's bedroom here, and those inks were trying to go everywhere. And I was like, no, we can't spray the wall. So here's kind of a close up, but I also have no flash. So <laughs> my phone was about to die, so it was really difficult for you to see. But you see much, much, much better. Much better. And what happened is overnight it continues to move. And so those colors continue to blend. And coming up, I'll give you a close-up of how it ended up. Thanks so much for hanging out this long. So this was our table before we did the pour. My husband refinished the frame so that it would be matchy matchy for the table really nice gunmetal color to go with the living room so you can see the glass was just kind of tinted before so this is sort of the okay so i spent like all of my life sanding the bottom of this today but looky looky and it's matchy matchy with the outside Look at the sparklies with some some black in there, some gray. Woo! You'd never know it was so crazy busy before. Woohoo! So anyway, thank you for being patient. Um, from mess to 
masterpiece. Um, there's a 20% off promo code for everything on Color Arts website. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Um, but yeah, if you're not a subscriber, we would love for you to join us. If you are, thank you so much. And thank you for enduring this super long video. Thank you for watching. Bye.